Hey, Glow Getters. Welcome back to another episode of The Glow Collective. I'm your host, Dr. V, and today's episode is titled Learning from the Past, Exploring Personal Relationships, and Appreciating Spiritual Divinity with my soul sister and quantum healing coach, Denali Veda. Now, a little bit about Denali here. Denali is an empowering quantum healing practitioner and a coach who has her own practice, Denali Mind, Body, Soul, Quantum Healing. She is a spiritual warrior and has so much to teach us about empaths, quantum healing, spiritual awakening, and she uses touching stories that are all based on her own personal experiences. Now, this episode is surely magnetic as always, and Denali is such a strong soul who has so much love and enthusiasm in what she does. I'm excited to dive into so many of these topics, and I know so many of our listeners are interested in energy and healing work, and so I'm really excited to dive into really what are empaths and what spiritual awakening, what it really is, and how so many of us are starting to experience our own versions of spiritual awakening, and really how this impacts the collective on a global scale. So in today's episode, we are going to learn all about Denali. We're going to hear how she turns over new leaves from her prior trials and tests from her past and how each of us can start to turn over our new leaf as many times as we need to. And Glow Getters, we also dive into the importance of self-talk and how we can learn from our traumas and insecurities and use these to actually fuel our own growth and evolution. And lastly, we dive into divine masculinity and femininity and how each person embodies and contains both of these two polarities of yin and yang and how bringing them into balance can really help serve our evolution and growth. So stay tuned, Glow Getters. This is going to be an incredible episode. So get ready and unleash that glow. All right, guys, I want to take a quick minute to give a shout out to our sponsor, Prolinium. So Prolinium is the maker of two of my absolute favorite fillers, Revenous Versa and Revenous Lips. Now, these two fillers are incredible because they have the highest concentration of hyaluronic acid, which is a magical little molecule that is naturally produced in your body and helps keep your tissues hydrated and healthy. Now, both of these fillers are loaded with this molecule, and the high concentration means that Revenous produces long-lasting, beautiful results that will always look completely natural while keeping your skin and lips healthy and hydrated. Now, Revenous Versa is one of the newer FDA-approved HA injectables used to treat mild to severe facial wrinkles and folds, such as those smile lines around the mouth. It's one of the best ways to take years off your appearance and help you smile with total confidence. It is hands down my favorite and go-to HA filler. If you've been thinking about improving those smile lines and refreshing your look, then you've got to try Versa. Use promo code LIPS to receive 10% off your first treatment with me or find a local Revenest provider near you. All right. Hey, guys. <laughs> so welcome to the next episode of The Glow Collective. So I have Denali here. Thanks so, for having me. Yes. Thank you for being here. Just, yeah, very excited, humbled. I- I'm humbled to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so to start off, you know, we like some centering and grounding. So I asked Denali to lead us in a short uh, centering yeah, exercise. meditation. Yes. Okay, yes. This is what part of what I do. So go ahead and wherever you are at this time, get in a comfortable position. Make Hopefully you're not driving. It's okay. Don't close your eyes if you're driving. And want to get into our heart space. I'm going to start with some deep cleansing breaths. It's all connected to the breath, our states of consciousness. So breathe in deeply. Hold that breath. And exhale through your mouth. Like the wind, blow it all away. Let go of all of your worries. Let go of your stress. And let go of all that does not serve you. And continue to breathe in healing golden light into your being, into your essence and feel its essence within. 
and continue breathing out the worries and the stress and the blues away. And now in a moment, I want you to imagine a waterfall in the distance. You are called to this waterfall. Your soul desires to be in this healing waterfall. So now imagine yourself immersed in this healing waterfall that's cleansing your mind and your body and your soul now. You can feel the cleansing water purifying and re-energizing you. It is so refreshing and calming. You are in a safe, and sacred place surrounded in nature drinking in this beautiful place of serenity enjoying this peaceful little place of heaven bringing more peace and balance and light into your mind and your body and your soul. And now that you have been cleansed and are so relaxed, go now and carry this feeling of peace and tranquility wherever you may be. And thank you and be blessed. So briefly, we want to dive into some fun topics on what the divine feminine is and divine masculine, divine feminine. And so Denali, why don't you lead us into what that is? Okay. Well, divine is another word for holiness or sacredness and connecting us to God. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to use the word divine a lot, actually. And but divine feminine and masculine, we, obviously we have the, a woman with mm-hmm. the feminine, and there are aspects that create and build up and really signify the divinity of women. Women, a true divine woman, is embodiment of love mm-hmm. and a mothering essence. A and it comes with that love, I would say that. But there's also, there's compassion and there's empathy Mm -hmm. are also part of divine femininity or divine, you know, feminineness and really realizing we don't, to be a divine feminine, it's not, we're selling our sexuality. Mm -hmm. We're not selling ourselves out to get attention. You know, so many women out there are, you know, they're showing all the skin. They're living provocatively. Mm -hmm. They are falling into soul traps, Mm -hmm. honestly, and they're not being their true self and Mm -hmm. definitely far away from the divine feminine. And it doesn't mean that being divine feminine, you're not sexy anymore. Mm -hmm. There's ways to be sexy without Mm -hmm. showing the things. There's ways to be sexier by respecting yourself and your body and your feminine power Mm -hmm. that realize you're gracing any man that gets to see this (laughs) body or, you know, it's just... And you're giving, you're attracting the wrong attention Mm -hmm. and the wrong, you're not going to get a divine man. (laughs) You are going to get a man that's going to use you, that came for you to the wrong, for the wrong reasons. And, but a divine masculine also has empathy. So what is, yeah, what, what would be the qualities? Really, there's things that go along with each other. Mm -hmm. And we all have that within us. We all have masculine, feminine. Yes. And it's really, each person should balance, try to find that balance of the masculine and feminine. And Really, we're a man and a woman are meant to balance each other with those aspects. Mm-hmm. But in a man, there is protectiveness. Mm-hmm. You know, there is, you know, you could say a strength with the divine uh, masculine. And then there is just, you know, leadership. But all these things could go hand in hand with either as yeah. well. 
And divine men to me, though, there's we need that we need that to come back. We need yeah. all the divineness to <laughs> yeah. come back, yeah. Because we have all these defeated men out there, yeah. and all these men that, of course, don't know who they are, yeah. And that they're operating from a state, space of separateness, mm-hmm. right, and ego, yes. And to understand loving a woman, so many men are afraid to love and afraid to settle down. And why is that? Because they're afraid of themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they are afraid to get hurt. Usually, yeah. this is really what it is. They've been hurt somewhere in their life. They're mm-hmm. a wounded man. Yeah, and it's easier to run away. It's easier to hide. It's not. It's easier to let. If you really get close to a woman and and start loving her, they're going to see you who you really are. Yeah. And most of these men are out there pretending. They're not anything who you know they put on a front. Yeah. yeah. You could say they're not being authentic, and the, they don't love themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. They'll, they'll they pretend. Cover. Yeah. They could have confidence, you know, superficially, but when it comes down to it, they're so insecure. Yeah, that's true. And they don't want people to see these these flaws and these insecurities. So, how can men, you know, any of our listeners? that are male, you know, male counterparts listening, or even like females that are operating more from their masculinity, Mm -hmm. how can we start to balance that and cultivate our feminine side? Not falling into society's toxic, Mm -hmm. you know, trends and cultures with how men and women are perceived in Hollywood and media and all those things. Yeah. That, you know, women are not pieces of meat. We are Mm -hmm. not just objects. Yeah. And the women out there that are like the Kardashians Mm -hmm. and, You know, they're the epitome of what, you know, really I'd say is not a good role model for women. And that's what a lot of our younger generation is watching Mm -hmm. (laughs) and consuming. Yes. And, you know, and they just, they see this provocativeness and they get all this attention. But really, these people are not happy. Yeah. They are not. There's no way that, you know, in, in aspects, I'm sure she is. But when... Men become honest with themselves is a big, and and women, we got to become honest with ourselves and say, you know, who are we really? Yeah. And what do we really want? Because at the end of the night, we can't just have one night stands forever. Mm -hmm. And you can't keep escaping and avoiding love and intimacy forever. Yeah. And we live in a culture where intimacy is very rare. Yeah. And people think having sex is intimacy. I'm going to tell you, it's it's really not the most intimate. You can have sex. It's not intimate at all. Yeah. That's true. And real, real intimacy comes from showing your heart and yeah. showing your wounds and yeah. showing you're vulnerable yeah. and sharing, you know, intimate and owning that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And presenting with that. Yes. And, and sensitivity and compassion. And definitely. And I think divine women also it's, there's a confidence that comes with either of them Yeah, that, you know, you become sure of yourself and you aren't that insecure little girl or insecure little man that, you know, you just exemplify the best attributes of a woman and what God intended us to be. And the same thing for a man. Yeah. That there's power in those divine, (laughs) feminine, and masculine. Oh, (laughs) knock your gloves down. (laughs) down. We're (laughs) knocking stuff down here. (laughs) But yeah, it's, it's a part of, it should be, you know, really taught to children too at a young age that we understand it's way, okay to show emotion yes. and lead with your heart. And too. men have been done a disservice because they're always taught to be tough. Mm-hmm. And they're always taught, you know, don't cry and boys don't cry. And so they, a lot of men have tons of eternalized pain. Mm. So much internalized pain. And, you know, and when we don't deal with our wo- inner wounds, yeah, you know, we're internally bleeding. Yeah. And then a true. lot of times they'll turn to addiction. So, yeah. you know, porn addiction, alcohol addiction, drug addiction. Yeah. Those are also reasons what, that are tearing apart society yeah. and, you know, families on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah, I, and I think it's so important. And how can, so here's, yeah, I would say this is probably a practical question for many of us that are listening. How can some of us who are either in relationships or exploring relationships and starting, you know, you want to be vulnerable and go down that path, how can we start to embrace that within you know Mm -hmm. within a relationship like I said honesty is your best Mm -hmm. policy start opening up start learning to communicate many men have a hard time communicating yeah but also and how do we do that yeah also well starting you know with we need to respect you know a man might want to communicate something that's not going to make their partner happy being okay with rejection yeah or being okay with not like 
you know, turning it into an argument when he's mm. trying to be honest. Well, look, I don't like when you do this or mm. this has been bothering me or I've been feeling this way. And it's not something that, you know, is all that positive, but it needs to be, you can't brush it under the rug. So how do you set the stage for that type of conversation to take place? Hmm. Because it's probably yeah. before you're already talking about something mm-hmm. heated. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say you need to stay, spending quality time is really important for for intimacy, for building and, and keeping a strong relationship. So having, setting time for date night, mm-hmm. setting also time for like, you know, weekly or monthly possibly that, mm-hmm. you know, we really check in with each other and how mm-hmm. are you really doing? Are you really okay with what I did? Mm-hmm. Or did you really forgive me for this and that? Or, you know, just maybe, you know, like I said, however much that couple needs, some couples need more work. Mm-hmm. Also finding counselors. Mm-hmm is a big thing to do that a lot of people are afraid, I think, to say, oh, there's yeah. something, what's wrong with us? We need to go to <laughs> yeah. There's no, don't have any shame in going yeah. to see a counselor. And the men might need to go on their own just yeah. to start opening up yeah. and start learning how to use their voice and talk about their feelings. Yeah. That That's when we start healing. Yeah. It's just talking about feelings is, is a healing act in itself. Yeah. And you can only talk about it if you know that you are harboring them or that you Mm -hmm. acknowledge them Mm -hmm. and embrace them right before you can set it free yes and that's why I love you know when you started out with reflecting and Mm -hmm. meditation Mm -hmm. analyzing you'll start Mm -hmm. you often you don't know oh wait I I feel this like that you feel a certain way Mm -hmm. right yes and letting go we put too much expectations on our partners for our own happiness or our own so let's, fulfillment let's dive into that that's a little a bit more because I think that I think it's so true we think we expect someone else to fulfill us so what are common things that you've seen where mm-hmm. we're, yeah, what high expectations do we put on a partner? Mm-hmm. Well, there's the co- co- de- codependency there, too, going <laughs> on, which is very unhealthy. Just that we expect, like, okay, I'm going to get married, I'm going to have kids, and I'm this is this is all that I need. This is what we women will, you know, program mm-hmm. themselves with these expectations of, yeah what they want in their man or this and that. But a lot of times our expectations are unattainable and they lead us to just feeling upset Mm -hmm. because we put, or even on date nights. And I used to do this to my husband. We've been together 12 years Mm -hmm. this year. Oh, yay. (laughs) And, um, but I would put expectations like he was neglecting me at times. He would work all the time. He was a workaholic and I was feeling just unloved and, you know, a little bit, you know, neglected and then like it was really important that we had a date and then I would say oh it's gonna be this and he's gonna do that and then he didn't do it and I would be upset yeah I just ruined my date yeah yeah even though it was he took the time to try put the effort in I was just looking and focusing on all the negative yeah yeah so expect expectations really and I think yeah what so what do you do like what do you say to yourself going into something like do you Mm -hmm. before date night or before you're Mm -hmm. gonna have time with a partner so now I go in with gratefulness instead of expectations yeah and there's a saying about expectations are the root of suffering or or there's it's something like that that so many times, again, it's my own thoughts yeah. that ruined something that could have been good and yeah. could have been great and I could have That's enjoyed. True. Instead, I put, you know, these strict guidelines and tried to control it <laughs> yeah. instead of letting it go and letting it be. And well, yeah. our partners never, they can't read our mind either. <laughs> you know, I mean, I wish, I, I wish they could. But, <laughs> right. So, yeah, but being honest with one another is so important. Yeah. And most people, again, don't we really, don't say We don't say something. Yeah. We don't speak up. Yeah. And most people aren't honest with themselves. Yes. And that's so. That's where it starts. If you mm-hmm. want to be honest with someone else, if you want to love someone else in that unconditional way, start by being yeah. honest with yourself and loving yourself under- unconditionally. Yes. And I think there's a point when you first start dating somebody and you're still in that really lovey-dovey stage that you idolize your partner. You're just yeah. like, oh, I just love everything about him. And he's just <laughs> perfect. And, you know, and I, I really, I did this to my husband too, especially. And then it came to a point where, you know, we had problems. We had issues that came up. He didn't do his healing. Yeah. And then, it came, like I said, he had all these inner wounds and it interfered. It finally, he couldn't yeah. hide it anymore. Yeah. And, but. So how did you navigate that? If you're going through, a, you're healing, your partner's not. Mm-hmm. How do you start to. Oh, that's, that's a hard one too. We can't force anyone to heal. So mm-hmm. it took 
my husband wasn't ready and we weren't married at this time. He wasn't ready to heal Mm -hmm. when I was. But we can't put our healing on hold because of that. Yeah. And all we can do is really, you know, lead by example and hope that motivates them. And they see how much happier you are. They see you healing. They see you growing and changing and evolving and finding your power. And, you know, hoping that will motivate them. Yeah. But versus versus placing an expectation that I'm doing this work and I expect my mm-hmm. partner to do the yeah. work as well. And don't be egoic in it. Like, oh, well, I'm so much, you know, yeah. well, you just, you are not doing this. You're doing everything wrong. And yeah. I can't be, you know, don't get discouraged or negative and bashing your partner. Yeah. And one of the worst things we can do is bash each other. Yeah. And compete with each other also. Yeah. When getting a man to open up mm-hmm. and getting him to be honest, it's really we got to start like nurturing mm-hmm. and start giving giving more love and giving and loving someone the way we want to be loved yeah. is so important. Yeah. Because most, I had to teach him how to love. I had to teach him how I needed to be loved. Yeah. And we're still doing that. We still teach each other that and vice versa. Yeah, and that's that's the evolution of your soul's journey, right? Mm-hmm. Together mm-hmm. in partnership, right? Yes, and we've been married eleven times in total in our past <laughs> lives. <laughs> He's my twin flame, actually, so we keep getting married. <laughs> we get married a lot of times. So let's let's dive into a little bit. You mentioned twin flames yes. and how you and your partner had been married several mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. Your souls connected in prior yes. lifetimes. Yes. Tell us about soul connections, twin mm-hmm. flame. What's the difference with okay. that, and how? souls that are meant to be together how mm-hmm. how you find each other in okay. in lifetime over lifetime uh, well it's divine timing when you guys meet up and when you do find each other and sometimes our twin is not ready for us when we are mm-hmm. so a lot of twins will not end up together but i'll say in this time a lot of twins are coming together and aligning because of the awakening and we're going into the golden age so mm-hmm. we're getting those rewards and going to have really good and great empowered relationships but twin flame is is the epitome and where a power couple comes from. Yeah. Because your twin is going to empower you to be your best self and vice versa. So it's really you are the power couple. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love that. And I would say, and that's how I feel like how my husband and I are. And there there's stages and it and it takes time to get that. And there's no perfect relationship. Yeah. And by means we have no perfect relationship but from where we are like we've been together 12 years we're completely different people we've <laughs> evolved so much and we're so much more mature yeah and know each other's love languages yeah. is another the love language book that is really good for yeah. relationships but your twin yes we will meet over and over in lifetimes mm-hmm. and it's always divine timing because I would ask Angel, I'm like god why didn't I meet him sooner it was <laughs> You know, and even when I met him, I wasn't ready for him when yeah. I first met him. Yeah. And, and what do you mean by that? I wasn't, I just, I was broken hearted when I met mm-hmm. him. I went through a horrible breakup mm-hmm. and horrible betrayal. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think I would ever trust or love anyone again. So mm-hmm. I was in a very dark yeah. and broken place. And the thought of men just disgusted me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I was cheated. It was just, it was just a nightmare relationship. And I gave all to this man and it was, a learning lesson and all of that. But so it was like a year later when I re-met him and I had done some healing mm-hmm. and finally felt was ready to kind of date again or mm-hmm. whatever. And even then I thought we would just be friends. So it yeah. was just, I wasn't <laughs> expecting to fall in love and I did. And it was yeah. just like, are we had that heart connection and yeah. that soul connection that I couldn't deny. And even he tried, he tried to deny me <laughs> like, you know, so um, we both tried to fight it. And there's actually stages they have that you can Google for Twin Flame. There's like a runner stage. Mm-hmm. And so I think we went, both went and did the runner stage at one point. And what's that? Well, it's when you avoid, you try to leave them or you mm-hmm. try to yeah. get away from them, avoid them, break up and all that. And there's, I think, six or seven stages. And I can't remember them all. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> but so you guys will have to Google twin flame like stages you go through. Mm-hmm. But like the middle stages and towards the mm-hmm. end are really hard and a lot of people won't make it. Mm. And but once you do, it's like, ah. <laughs> and so I, I mean, there were times when I thought, you know, there's no way there's yeah. no way I can't I can't do this anymore. And I'm so glad that I didn't quit and and that we made it through our like our love trial. Yeah, yeah, I love <laughs> it was that. our it was our biggest love test. 
And now, yeah, so now I'd say we've been the power couple for a, a little while and we'll see what life has in store for us. But people know about soulmates, you know, that's yeah. very common. So Most, what's the difference? A soulmate can be your friend, your mm-hmm. pet, a mm-hmm. family member, mm-hmm. and a lover. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessary. Most people will end up with a soulmate mm-hmm. more often. And we also have a karmic partner. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, sure. Yeah. So a karmic that. partner is, you know, kind of what it says, you know, yeah. in its name is it's it's going to be there basically just to give you karma back in your life that you needed and teach you mm. some hard lesson. Mm. So the partner before him was a karmic partner mm-hmm. that made me go through hell and heartbreak. And it led to, you know, teaching me things about myself, finding to love myself without a partner. And yeah. I need, and really that's important to do. Um, we have to love ourselves even when we're alone. Be okay Absolutely. with being alone. Yeah. And when you find that partner, it's just icing on the cake. Exactly. We already have You're our You're already cake. complete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I agree. I think so often we think a partner needs to complete us, but really it's we complete ourselves. Yes. And then when two holes meet mm-hmm. versus two broken, unhealed, yes. traumatized individuals. Yes. <laughs> I, and I think a lot of people are obsessed with on this twin flame journey. There's like two, I don't know how many groups I've seen on Facebook that are like twin flame this and twin flame that. And all these people <laughs> obsessed with it. And we cannot be obsessed with finding that one yeah. that we got to work on uh, when we exactly. get to the point. It took for me to be at that right point for me to meet him. Yeah. So we have to keep working on ourselves yeah. personally. Gotta and then the, the universe is going to bring you that divine partner. Yeah. Because if you're not ready, it's going to, it's not going to be good. <laughs> you got <laughs> to you you do the Go work. In flames. Yes. Well, and you got to earn it. It's almost like we have to earn it and we have to yeah. get to that right stage in life to where it, it will work out. Yeah. And, and it comes to fruition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. <laughs> okay. Anything else? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, wait, well, let's see. What else can we talk about? Um, yeah. No, I, I, think, think, that, I think it was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just don't be obsessed with the twin flame and love, be okay with loving love yourself enough to where you really don't need a partner and and yeah. you know you're gonna find that twin's gonna come yeah when you're not when you don't expect it yeah so yeah and then you're not overcompensating seeking something externally mm-hmm. right and I mm-hmm. think that's part of where and and not just within relationships but with addictions or skincare when you're overdoing yes. something mm-hmm. it's from that when you're trying to fill a void yes <laughs> yeah we gotta go with it we have to find the inner well, the inner, the innerness of our being is everything we need is within mm-hmm. us. Absolutely. It's such a good mantra to remember. Yeah. That when we, whenever the world, whatever is going on in our life, whatever chaos, like going within, going inwards and refining that self-love and just yes. saying, what is this teaching me right now? Yeah. And you will just, your life is, is going to be set on a different course yeah. and Time know, for shift. the better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So if you want to find and listen to her 10-minute guided meditation, go to her YouTube yeah. and listen. And mm-hmm. I swear by meditation, it's one of just the practices I've been doing for many years now. And yes. it every day is a deeper and more enriched yeah. experience. So. And meditation is like medication it's better than medication <laughs> I'd say yeah. it, yeah. it, it worked that's what one of my clients told me I sent me he was god this works like better than medication and I'm like well yeah. thank you that's a good that is yeah. a good compliment and um it does you just give it a try I, yeah. I, I don't think you'll regret it all yeah. of you out there <laughs> <laughs> love it love it all right you guys and now for a little bit more from our sponsor Prolinium I'm even more excited with the launch of their newest filler Revenous Lips Did you know that lip rejuvenation is one of the most popular and requested minimally invasive procedure right now? You guys, as we age, our lips tend to look deflated and dry. For all of my glow getters curious about lip rejuvenation, we can create a subtle and naturally beautiful pout that will never look puffy or overdone. It's what I want to get in my own lips. And unlike other fillers, Revenous Lips is scientifically formulated to reduce swelling and produce long lasting results. If you're curious to learn more, Check out our Instagram page at D-R-V-S-K-I-N to see some of my amazing before and afters, or you can find the local Revaness provider near you using the link in the show notes and use promo code LIPS to receive 10% off your first treatment with me. What's your YouTube for our listeners? Denali Mind, Body, Soul is my YouTube and my website and my Facebook, everything. Okay, perfect. (laughs) So we'll have that linked up. So Denali Mind, Body, Soul. And Denali is D-E-N-A-L-I. Correct. 
So, all right. <laughs> Denali's just been through a lot in her life and it's come to a point where she's walking the path yes. and guiding others. Mm -hmm. And why don't you start off by just sharing a little bit about your journey to where you are now? Yes. Well, yeah, I've come a long way, I would say. <laughs> I've had, you know, some chapters that are, are not, you know, our best chapters. We have good and chap bad mm -hmm. chapters in our life. Growing up, my, my, my childhood was very rough. I came mm -hmm. from a broken home. There was drinking and drugs mm -hmm. with my parents and then step-parents. And I was exposed to a lot of things that children shouldn't see and be around. Mm -hmm. And so what I know now as an adult is I was tested as a young age. And all these things that we go through are trials or tests. Mm -hmm it was making me stronger, mm -hmm. you know, and as a child, I wasn't that strong and it was very hard. And I even dealt with suicidal tendencies at a young age. It was something that I even, you know, went ahead and attempted by, you know, I had these voices in my head that were telling me I wasn't good enough, mm -hmm. telling me nobody loved me, telling me I was a burden in life. Once my mother remarried, she, I was neglected. I was no longer important. She had her new husband and new children. And so I, there was a lot of turmoil and change. And my life was turned upside down very in a short amount of time. And I didn't know how to deal with it or cope with these things. No one taught me, yeah. you know, coping mechanisms. Many people aren't, you know, yeah. even into adulthood, still not knowing mm -hmm. some healthy, you know, ways to deal with our problems. But really one of the pivotal things in my childhood was listening to these voices telling me these awful things and believing it. Right. And yeah. I went and took a bottle of aspirin mm -hmm. and immediately almost, you know, well, a few minutes after I heard another voice in my head telling me, go tell your mom what you did. Go, you shouldn't have done that. Go tell your mom. Mm -hmm. And, and I listened to that voice and I went and told my mother and I was ashamed of what I did. I didn't tell her, you know, I did it on purpose. Mm -hmm. So I ended up telling her that I, I took too many pills on accident. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to the doctor telling, you know, him the same thing. And he's like, well, he probably just won't have a headache for a long time. <laughs> because luckily that was all that I could find. You yeah. know, I make light of it now, yeah. even though suicide's a very serious thing. Absolutely. And I can make light of it now that, you know, I've been through it and overcame it and see, you know, how in suicide is such a, you know, a touchy subject. And it's, we've had so many just in the past year mm -hmm. of people that have been committing suicide. But what I want people to know is there is, there's a story that I like to, you know, remind people of, of the two wolves. It's a native American story. Mm -hmm. And the story goes, we have a battle between two wolves mm -hmm. that is going on within us. And one wolf represents love and positivity and hope and these positive aspects. And then the other wolf is there and then it's hate and greed and depression or, you know, just the negative side through the bad wolf, you'd say. And so we want to know who wins the battle, right? Mm -hmm. So who's going to win the battle is they say the one that you feed. Mm. Or you could say the voice that you listen to. Yeah. So luckily, I was, you know, smart enough at that time to start listening more and more mm -hmm. as it went on to the good wolf yeah. or the good voice, which is truly our higher self. Yeah. And our higher self is also called the soul. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for people not familiar with that. But that was just the beginning of one of my trials. It was battles of depression my whole life, not mm -hmm. feeling good enough. My father was an Italian Catholic military man. Wow. Very, very hard on me. Nothing was ever good enough. You know, my, it was just no matter how hard I tried, I never felt I was enough. And even into adulthood, I carried that programming. Oh, absolutely. Carried that negative programming that I, I'm not going to be good enough for anyone. And yeah. my you know, am I worthy to be here? Am right. I, am I worthy of, you know, so many things. And it was really, I had epiphanies after going through Lyme disease as mm -hmm. another big trial that I went through. And that was my spiritual, huge spiritual awakening time, mm -hmm. discovering my path, my mission. And that's what really led me to be a healer, holistic mm -hmm. healer and teacher mm -hmm. and help people out of their dark night of the soul, help people out of this you know, just 
hopeless place. Mm -hmm. And I went from a life of looking back that I was just trying to survive. Absolutely. And now, you know, the past five, six years, I'm like, I feel I'm thriving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is just anybody can do this. We all have this capability. Yeah. And it's really, you know, finding and awakening your true self, finding a spiritual path that aligns with you. Yes. Finding the courage to stand mm-hmm. up to your demons, to stand up and face, you know, whatever realities are there. There's things that we can change and things that we can't. Yeah. But but I always try to teach people is, you know, being the spiritual path, it doesn't mean your problems magically go away. <laughs> no. <laughs> doesn't mean we still live in this 3D world. We still live in the matrix. So we have, you know, we have stress, we have family, we have work, we have... Yeah, All just the, daily living, yes. your car stops working or something. Yeah, yeah. and that's so how you, you deal with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to have good days and bad days still. But how I deal with my problems now and stress is is like with grace, you mm-hmm. know, is with patience. I love that. With understanding. If somebody comes to hurt me, if mm-hmm. someone's trying to trigger me, yeah, you know, yeah. instead of, well, I'm, I can say something back to you, yeah. you know, an yeah. eye for an eye. Instead, I, you know, you want to bless that person Mm -hmm. that is trying to hurt you because Mm -hmm. understanding hurt people hurt people. Yeah, that is, that's true. And I I think it's, you know, I, I loved when you're saying with the two wolves, like, which one do you feed? Mm -hmm. And we all have these voices, right? That, that are telling us self-serving things Mm -hmm. or not. And Mm -hmm. how do you, so when you were starting and you had a predominance of these heavier energies and thoughts, how did you start to shift towards grace and, Mm -hmm. and patience and understanding with yourself? Yes. Well, meditation, study, changing my lifestyle. I was a big partier, hung out with lots of partiers Mm -hmm. and, you know, you really got to break away Mm -hmm. from those bad groups or people that you think are your friends as we awaken, as we evolve you're going to realize who your true friends are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and even fam- sometimes you have family members that are really toxic, mm-hmm. you know, that really can, you know, trigger you or bring you down. And we have to learn to set boundaries with them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, truly, I dedicated myself to, it's a lifestyle change. Yeah, absolutely. And That's what I say. It's like, yes. It doesn't happen overnight. It's these mm-hmm. small changes over time of looking back. And one day then you look back and you're like, wow, like Mm -hmm. the shift occurred. Yes. Yeah. And (laughs) it doesn't happen overnight. No, (laughs) it does not happen overnight. And I, it's like, we're all a work in progress. I will still say I am still a work in progress. (laughs) Likewise. (laughs) And um, I am humbled, you know, often I had just the other day, one of my favorite rings, I ended up getting mad at my husband and it really was not a big deal. It's we're in retrograde is what I'm accrediting it to. <laughs> but I got a little emotional and I got really upset and aggressive with him. And then later that day, my, my gem fell, one of my favorite rings, the mm-hmm. gem fell out and that was my karma. Mm. I got instant, almost yeah. instant karma. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. I go, okay, universe, I get it. And I, I already knew I messed up, but <laughs> You know, and, and, and the reverse happens all the time that I am getting blessed and these things out of nowhere, great yeah. things, good things happening to me, because in general, that's what I'm doing is putting good out there yeah. because with the law of attraction, what you give is what you're going to get. Yeah, absolutely. So how do we, so how do we start if we're, you know, going through life and we're maybe on auto, autopilot a little mm, bit, like every, a lot of people. Yeah. And, and, and how do we start to take note of a synchronicity or a blessing or something mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. and, and, or see the opportunity in a challenge or a lesson. Yes. How do we start to do that? Well, firstly, realizing everything's a lesson mm. is a big thing to remind yourself of or at, and that when you realize that you don't think of it in the moment. So sometimes I'll have to remind myself, oh, this was a test. This is a lesson, mm-hmm. but understanding what we give out is is coming back, also reminding us of that, mm-hmm. that, you know, studying, devoting yourself to becoming the best version of yourself mm-hmm. is really, you know, an inner goal that that's one of my inner goals and just studying whatever you're called to, what's your passion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think people think, you know, you got to do yoga, you got to have crystals, mm-hmm. you got to have, you know, right. all these, there's, they're great. And I have all those things, but you know, someone might not be into that right now or not ready for that. And 
we want to make sure we're not going through motions with those things. Right. So whatever we're doing, it's intention is so important. Mm-hmm. Our, so what does intention mean to you? How do you define intention, intention? of love is what we should be doing with mm-hmm. every word we speak, with mm-hmm. everything we do, with every step we take. Mm-hmm. This is what I've been taught by the angels and from, you know, my higher self and, and from my masters that I've studied of, you know, spiritual masters like Buddha and Jesus and mm-hmm. Krishna their true religion was love. Mm. And this is a big teaching that I try to teach people that, you know, once we, we live our life like a prayer and that prayer or intention Mm -hmm. is love and Mm -hmm. unconditional love is truly what it is. So I think, I think, yeah, the whole premise of, well, what is love? And often it's conditional and we Mm -hmm. don't recognize when we're participating in that, right? Yes. And shifting to uh, how we can start to demonstrate unconditional yes. love. And that comes with, right? Like if there's someone wishing ill on you or mm-hmm. sending them back love, yes. that is the greatest yes. strength. Yes. <laughs> it's easier to curse someone. It's easier yes. to hold a grudge. <laughs> and gossip. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And be jealous or these things. And there's so many challenges in this world. And so it's really coming out of the world, stepping back mm-hmm. and, and also observing your own thoughts to realize, is this a good wolf or the bad wolf? Mm. Yeah. But most importantly, learning to love yourself for all of our, yes. <laughs> so many of us don't. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think also with my journey, you know, to self-love and we're told a lot of different things or we think Mm -hmm. a lot of different things of how we're supposed to think or feel or be or carry ourselves and once you start to distill the essence of it and come back Mm -hmm. to well what is my nature and why am I here Mm -hmm. and what is you know what is my mission what is my soul's purpose and asking those questions uh, when you ask the answer comes (laughs) Yeah, it does. And maybe it, not the answer you want. Yeah, it isn't. I mean, I, I get lectured by the angels sometimes, like, you know, and, and we need that. But it is, I say, prayers when we talk to God and meditation is when we listen. Mm-hmm. And meditation yeah. is such an important practice. And yeah. I meet people all the time or work with clients all the time. I can't meditate. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to meditate. Or you know, I don't have time to meditate. And I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> you know, yeah. You're making yeah. excuses. Yeah. But it's not something that's unattainable to meditate. I right. think there's a lot of misconceptions. Like what? Yeah. Let's dive into some of those. Yeah. Well, I just give people the options. Like if you say you can't meditate, you know, go in the shower, turn mm-hmm. on meditation music or go to a bath. Mm-hmm. My favorite place to meditate actually is in the bath. I'm Mm -hmm. going to put some essential oils. Mm -hmm. I make it a sacred time. It's a Mm -hmm. sacred bath, actually. I'll say a prayer. I'll bless my water. Mm -hmm. You could put rose petals if you really, you know, want to do some really good self-love rituals, but light a candle or incense and play your meditation music in there. I guarantee you will meditate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because how often, how many of us quickly jump in the shower and right, and then you jump out and instead of carrying the intention of love or with mm-hmm. prayer and yes, it's, it's healing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yes. And another thing I'll do in the bath is like when I'm bathing myself, I'll tell my body, I love you. Mm-hmm. I am grateful for you. Yeah. Like so many times I've told my body, Oh, you don't look good. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you're not strong enough or complain about my body. So I use that time to focus on giving, really giving myself yeah. as much love as I can because you're not getting it in the world <laughs> no, and or else are you going to yeah. get it? You got to give to yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, I love skincare. I love dermatology. I love aesthetics. And I think mm-hmm. part of, you know, with my journey to aesthetics was, well, it was actually a journey to self-love Yes, because society tells us to we need to look a certain way or change Mm. something. Mm -hmm. But instead, you know, so I I became cynical about what aesthetics is and how Mm. it's used or am Mm. I selling my soul first? But then I realized, you know, we all need to take care of ourselves. We all want to do our best to look our best. We work out, we eat Mm. clean. So it's the same thing with skincare or procedures. It's the intention behind it. Are you using it to fuel Mm self-love or are you using it to... Yes cover up Mm -hmm. an inner void right yeah I think think there's a fine line from being vain and then you know make sure we're just we're we're presentable we're you know we're taking care of ourselves hygienically and there's nothing wrong with you know wearing makeup or dressing up and looking your best and feeling your best 
So, but yeah, but then there's people that go to extreme and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, obsess with, with their looks and the exterior and material things. And that's never going to bring them true happiness. And that's never going to bring them fulfillment. Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. And I think, so when, when, when we talk about an entrance into self-love from skin, Mm -hmm. has there, what are things that you've just faced well, definitely um, with Lyme disease, it attacks everything. It's mm-hmm. a very, very, very evil, evil disease, and it affected my skin a lot. Mm-hmm. I was also losing my hair because it affects your thyroid, but I was getting dark spots. I still have some, and I still have some on my face that I battle with, and that really was a test for me to still love myself of when I don't have beautiful skin or I don't right. have this clear skin, yeah, and absolutely. I feel I look older. I was like, oh, I look older than my friends, and I've been aged so much, and I've had them removed, and they come back sometimes, yeah. so it's yeah. like, oh, but, you know, where I am with it now is I we have to love ourselves regardless, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there may, you know, there are people that are truly deformed. Oh, absolutely. You know, out there, and Women have been dealt such a disservice from Hollywood, from the media, from Mm -hmm. Cosmopolitan, like, you know, it's just, you know, all these photoshopped and all these unnatural. Yes. And and it's chasing something and and it's saying that when you have this, this, then you'll be happy Mm -hmm. or loved Mm -hmm. or, and that's what it comes down to. Like Mm -hmm. so often we think, oh, if we do this, then this person will see me better. Yes. And instead it's shifting it to, well, mm-hmm. how, what do I need to do to see myself? Yes. Right. And our looks are going to fade no matter how beautiful <laughs> you <laughs> are. I mean, maybe not. I don't know if we find the, the uh, elixir of immortality or <laughs> the fountain of youth. I still think maybe we'll find that one day <laughs> why I'm here. But yeah, it is, you know, we, we put ourselves down and we put our, ourselves in these molds that are not from God. They are not serving the greater good. Mm -hmm. And it's good. It's like the more women recognize these unhealthy, I would say toxic beauty standards Mm -hmm. and toxic beauty trends. I'm trying to think of what that's a top, one of the trends that was I really don't like right now. There's a <laughs> there's, few. There's, 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 a lot. A few. there's a lot, but that's, um, that's yeah. what I think like where I come in with you know patients or you know we it's not just females it's it's men as yeah, well. We too. all have body right mm-hmm. body image and being how we present ourselves, but. I always, you know, it's coming from, well, well what, is, what will doing this, like a procedure, what, what will that enable you yes. to do? And is that something where you can lead with more confidence yes. and not just do that? What are other things that you can do on the internal side? Mm-hmm. What practices can you start to incorporate? Mm-hmm. So as we move on the external side of improving our skin, we're yes. also fortifying it with um, nutrition yes. and, yeah, yeah. And, and our mindset and and manifesting is real. This this is leading me into manifesting, and the angels wanted me to talk about that. I'm an angel communicator too, so we didn't say. So people are like, "Why is she talking about angels?" Um, yeah, that's part of. I work with the angels. I'm really blessed. And but you and like I said, we all have divine capabilities. I told mm-hmm. her earlier, and divine powers that we just have to learn to practice mm-hmm. and to access and to awaken or activate. But manifesting, like our thoughts, create you know, yes. what is going out into the universe? If Absolutely. we, if, if I think, oh, my skin's ugly, my skin's so bad every day, we're actually going to manifest more of that. So yeah. we even have to, if we have a skin issue or whatever the issue is with our body, the more we focus at it telling, you know, in a negative way, the more it's creating more of a problem. Yeah. I have an interesting story. Okay. Yeah. So on the intro of our trailer, when I was making the podcast and prepping all of that, this was back in, in March, no acne. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then, which is so interesting. Yeah. And then in my, so I had to like have a theme. So in the beginning, I recorded a little thing where I said, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. My mm-hmm. skin's broken now. Yeah. I have to cover this up. Mm-hmm. And, and then it's, it's funny how, okay, over the next, and then I listened to that because mm-hmm. I had to yeah. listen to my Yourself. recording. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so <laughs> over the next six weeks, I was like, wow, just, I don't know if that played a role, but I do believe yeah, our, our thoughts and our intentions, what we listen, what we expose ourselves to mm, yes. plays a big role. Definitely. And being mindful of our thoughts is a big game changer again, mm-hmm. like just and how can we start to do that? Mm-hmm. Well, our self-talk, you know, start <laughs> start yes. having better self-talk. And, you know, I, I like to compare 
Like if you were a mother or there's someone you love, you could say, and they came up to you, a child mm-hmm. came up to you and says, I don't like myself. Mm-hmm. I don't feel good about myself or, you know, I don't even love myself. Mm-hmm. And how would you feel if a child felt this way and said this to you? Yeah. It would, it's heartbreaking. It'd break your heart. Yeah. You'd be like, no, honey. Like, <laughs> yes. But we say these things to ourselves on Very a regular true. basis and we're abusing ourselves, and we don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. So many people, I work with clients that have been traumatized, mm-hmm. that have gone through all kinds of things, you know, molestations, rapes just abuse of all different kinds and help people through these very traumatic and hard, hard times, losing a loved one, all different issues, but people will keep reliving the trauma. People will keep abusing themselves even Mm -hmm. after they've left the abuse or they've left that traumatic situation. And how How they relive it in their head. Mm. They're speaking it over and over. They're living in the past, which Mm -hmm. is such a, such a, such a way to waste your life. Oh, absolutely. And waste your energy. Absolutely. It's stealing, you're, you're stealing, (laughs) you're, it's soul sucking thing that it's a trap that we focus on what it could have should is of the past. Yeah. And I say, you know, no matter from my past, I wouldn't erase it. Yeah. I made you who you are. Yes. I I wouldn't have learned. Yeah. You know, I've learned so much from the mistakes that Mm -hmm. I've made. Yeah. And, and likewise, you know, and I agree, like we, we think if, and we think if you change one thing, life would turn out different. Mm -hmm. Probably, but we really don't know. Mm -hmm. But what we have is our life here today. And each, you know, each of the choices we've made has built us into the person we are. And that will continue to serve us as we continue to grow and evolve. Yeah, yes. And, uh, and really the foundation of what I teach, as I said earlier, is self-love should be your foundation of your rebirth, of mm-hmm. your awakening, of mm-hmm. your spiritual path, of your lifestyle change. And when we have a strong foundation of self-love, it's, it's just a game changer. Absolutely. It is, yeah. it, it will change your life. And Absolutely. it doesn't mean you become a millionaire. <laughs> you, you become spiritually rich in a way, yeah. I could say. Well, and I think part of it along, you know, I'm very conscientious now of how I speak to myself and mm-hmm. before if, if, you know, we would be critical, but now I'm just like, no, sweet girl, this is what happened. Mm-hmm. And all you have to do, pick yeah. it up, you know, put this aside. Yes. We'll try again. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. like that. Right. But yeah, very, very. when we start, we are not like that. We're like, mm-hmm. why did you do that? Are you mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's yes. not helpful. <laughs> no, it's not. And it's, we have to remind ourselves though. And really you become, they say you become the people you hang around, mm-hmm. the books you read, the music you listen to. I also say, be mindful of those things. Absolutely. We are not just what we eat. Mm-hmm. You know, we're consuming with our eyes, we're consuming with our ears. And, mm-hmm. you know, so my music taste has completely changed. The shows <laughs> I watch completely changed. The food I eat mm-hmm. is a reflection of my love for myself. Yeah. Am I eating all this crap? Am I drinking soda? Am mm-hmm. I drinking too much liquor? You yeah. know, those are things that are abusing my body. Yeah. No, if, exactly. So it's important that we, you know, self-analyze a lot, self-reflect a lot, but forgive yourself too when you mess up. Yeah. Like, you know, I eat some fried food. I, what did I do this weekend? I had too many margaritas maybe this weekend. But (laughs) But you also, I I think part of it too is like when we, when someone's on the spiritual path or thinking of it, you know, they think they have to completely change everything mm-hmm. or let go. Yes, you do shift, but you mm-hmm. still, at the end of the day, are you human. We're here to mm-hmm. live in the world and be in the world. And it's just the energy that we we carry. Yes. That's the whole bit. That's the biggest difference. So mm-hmm. you can still partake in things as long as you know and understand mm-hmm. your reasoning as to why you're doing it. Yes. And you do it for as an expression of self-love. All right, guys. And now for a message from one of our sponsors, Skin Better Science. In 2016, Skin Better Science set out to create a new paradigm in skincare to help patients like our glow getters achieve beautiful skin. I love that all of their products are free of fragrance and dyes, gluten-free, paraben-free, and cruelty-free. Their complex science-based products make for a simplified regimen for our clients and results can be seen in as little as four weeks. I look forward to sharing more about their individual products in the upcoming podcast. Now, some of my personal favorite products includes Alto Defense, which contains 19 different antioxidants to combat the aging process. I also love their compact SPF and SPF sticks. Their award-winning products are backed by a diverse team with decades of experience in clinical research and development, such as powerhouse products like filler and neuromodulators, Restylane and Dysport. 
and they're furthered by a continued commitment to the study of skincare science and the introduction of new technologies. Their research focuses on testing the efficacy and tolerability of their final formulations, emphasized on clinical studies conducted by board-certified physicians. Now, if you're ready to try out Skin Better, check out their Instagram at S-K-I-N-B-E-T-T-E-R. That's at Skin Better on Instagram. And check out this link to order your first set of Skin Better products today. HTTPS colon backslash backslash skinbetter.pro dash D-R-V-S-K-I-N. And I think, I mean, there's all kinds of addictions out there and food is a big one. And that's Mm -hmm. probably one food is maybe, and I I grew up with, my dad was a chef as well. And I would say I'm a foodie. So (laughs) I'm passionate about food, but there's so many healthy foods out there that are delicious. Oh, absolutely. So just because (laughs) you eat healthy doesn't mean you have to sacrifice flavor. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people have that misconception Mm -hmm. that, you know, I make these roasted chickpeas with curry that are like, (laughs) Everybody eats them. I'm like, those are so good. And I'm like, there, it's like a super healthy snack. And I, I make them all the time, eat them all the time, but, or I'll make people vegan dishes and don't tell them it's vegan. And they don't know. They're like, oh, that's so good. Well, it was vegan. And, you know, they're into, oh, I would never eat vegan food. That's really weird. Or I, you know, they want to be macho and I only eat meat. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, you know, I just feel so better. You're going to, when you eat this junk too, you're going to like beat yourself up. You're like, oh, now I don't feel good. Now I have a stomach ache. Yeah. Now I got to lose that five pounds I just gained. Mm-hmm. And so, but it's okay. We're up, we're all a work in progress. I like Absolutely. to say, you know, give yourself grace, give yourself forgiveness, but always try. Keep yeah. trying. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that. And I think, you know, I hope for our glow up listeners that, you know, there's a common theme in what we're sharing over these episodes. Mm -hmm. And a big thing that I would love if there's anything for someone to incorporate is how can we turn back to Mm self-love? And and I love that making it an expression of self-love and everything that you do and using grace and forgiveness as we continue on. So I, I really love that. Yes. And I feel like I I'm not saying God directly, but all of this is, you know, related to God and related to spirituality. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to mention is self-love is one of the greatest acts or ways to show God respect Mm -hmm. because we are God's children. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, if a child says, I hate myself, I don't love myself, and God hears those thoughts and feels those things. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't want us to hate ourselves. No. (laughs) And and it's really the people that have low self-esteem that aren't loving themselves they are causing more and more damage to themselves, which mm-hmm. also hurts God. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're really sinning. Mm-hmm. We in sinning in thoughts and lifestyle and, and, and all these things and, and in your intentions and not purposefully a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. They, people just unknowingly. Just, yeah. Some people don't know any better. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we it's it's starting to shift one one mm-hmm. thought at a time, one the way you speak to yourself. And yes. yeah, I, and I love that your environment. So Next, so a question for you. Mm-hmm. When did you start to really, when you're on the path, when did you decide to really start coaching and helping others in that way? And what was that process uh-huh. like? Okay. Well, I think I was, I was doing hair and went to beauty mm-hmm. school and I think I was already like a coach. <laughs> your hairdresser and your bartender is really, <laughs> are your life coaches. <laughs> Unofficially, we don't get paid for it, but you know, people always ask our advice and mm-hmm. tell us their problems. So like, Unofficially, I was kind of life coaching and guiding people. I would always tell my clients, you know, you know, give don't drink diet soda. It's yeah. so bad for you. Trying to get them to eat healthier, mm-hmm. try to get them to do yoga, mm-hmm. or you know, just introducing just things yeah. that are healthy and good for them. But it's you know, three years ago, I guess, I started Denali Mind Body Soul page mm-hmm. as a. I didn't even post my picture on it. Mm-hmm. And this was me like just, okay, I'm putting myself out there now. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to do that. And I decided I wanted it to be like a community page and I'm just going to post love, light and wisdom Mm -hmm. and spiritual teaching Mm -hmm. and I'm giving it all for free. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, it's, I don't charge people for all these. I think a lot of people, I mean, you could find some of this stuff anyway, but the point is it's like, I want to just connect with more people. I want to keep Facebook and social media has so many negative, Mm -hmm. you know, things that you can find everywhere. So at least I have a a safe 
page yeah. and you might learn something and feel better about yourself and teach and share that with others. But so yeah, three years ago, officially, I started like the spiritual life coaching and, and then quantum healing. And then that mm-hmm. led to becoming a quantum healer, which is, mm-hmm. is such an amazing um, healing yeah, modality. share about, share about it because I don't I don't think many of our listeners may know what it is. So. Yes, I think you're right. Many people I had not even heard of it until. Yeah. and months. they're like, "What is this like woo stuff?" <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Like, oh, bear okay. with us. Bear with us. Here. We're gonna get a little woo woo. Well, quantum <laughs> heal. I call it quantum healing. It comes from Q H H T, which mm-hmm. was developed by Dolores Cannon. Mm-hmm. She was the creator of quantum healing hypnosis therapy. Mm-hmm. And it's a type of regression hypnosis therapy. Mm -hmm. I practice an evolution of it. Mm -hmm. Um, As I started, I was actually guided to do some things differently. Mm -hmm. And a normal QHHT session can be four hours, which is a long time. time. (laughs) Yeah, just carve out your day. (laughs) Yeah, and and it's really expensive. You know, you're paying four or five hundred and up for a quantum healing session. So as I started doing this work, I found I, the angels taught me you can do it this way. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able, I do my sessions in an hour and a half up to two hours and you get just as much healing or, or more. She used to go through, because we actually access a past life Mm and quantum healing regressions. She would go through and do all these details of, okay, well, I'm at work and I'm a farmer and I'm doing this and Mm -hmm. did it. So it was a lot of mundane and not important details that would take up majority of the time. Mm-hmm. So I can pre- I fast forward. I'll say, okay, fast forward that scene, mm-hmm. and we get to an important moment in that life where the, they need healing mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So that has been really great because people have, you know, it's easier to take an hour and a half, two hours, and four mm-hmm. hours of our day. Oh, absolutely. And then I cut the price in half. Yeah. And to me, it's not about money. I gift sessions as well yeah. and work with people or just do donations if mm-hmm. they can't afford but quantum healing is one of the things that helped change my life mm-hmm. and brought me answers, clarity, healing. It's a soul healing. It's actually mind, body, and soul healing mm-hmm. all in one. But we will, in a session, in a normal session, you can talk to your angels. You mm-hmm. can talk to your ancestor that passed away. You get to ask questions that you need answers from the universe from. Mm-hmm. So it's an, it's like you're going to a psychic, yeah. kind of. So if you've ever thought about going to a psychic, you know, this this is also for you. But also, fundamentally, it's for healing. Yeah. And we have issues from this life, but we also have issues from our past life, is yeah. what most people are unaware of. Yeah. That you can have a phobia or an anxiety, mm-hmm. and it's actually related to a way you died or something that happened mm-hmm. to you in a past life, and that's very common. So how can we start to explore that? Well, you can you can look up Dolores Cannon. Mm-hmm. She has fourteen, I believe, books that she's written. Where wow. she, you know, um, the Three Waves of Volunteers is one of my favorite books. Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of free videos that she'll talk about the quantum mm-hmm. healing, and then my YouTube, of course, Denali Mind Body Soul. And then yeah, just you can go to the QHHT website. Mm-hmm. I'm on there as well. And it is it's not very known. It's been around. At least 20 years, I believe. I'm not exactly sure how long, but she, the woman that developed it, it's, it's amazing. She was just, she was an older woman that mm-hmm. did hypnotherapy for the military. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, she had clients that started going into other lives. They were another sex all of a sudden. Oh, wow. They were, and then she was really intrigued yeah. by this. Yeah. And then her work just progressed from there that she realized, okay, reincarnation is real and past mm-hmm. lives are real. Yeah. And these people need healing on that. And yeah. that's part of you know their PTSD. Wow. Many people may not believe in reincarnation mm-hmm. and past lives. So how can, if someone's not open to it, mm-hmm. how can we, is it something that you can still explore or how can we start to allow ourselves to I think we should always be open to explore first off always go into whatever information you're hearing we should of course I'd say research it in in a physical way but also go within Mm -hmm. and see how it feels use your intuition does this feel true does this feel right does this could this be true yeah but the other person that helped lead me into before I met Dolores Cannon, before I knew about her, was Edgar Casey. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar no, with I Edgar don't know. Casey, Who is that? Yeah. he was called the Sleeping Prophet. Mm-hmm. He was from Kentucky, mm-hmm. and he was just a regular guy. And he had he's like to me more famous than Nostradamus, and <laughs> and, and really his following. He's a modern Nostradamus, you could say. 
But when he was 19 years old, he lost his voice. Mm -hmm. And no doctors could figure out why, what was going on. And for some reason, I guess they had a hypnotist in a small town in Kentucky. (laughs) (laughs) And when he went under, he could speak. And he told exactly why it happened. Wow. And how to heal it. Wow. And, and, and it was, you know, all the people heard about this. And he discovered how to hypnotize himself, mm-hmm. which hypnotizing is guided meditation. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what it really is. It's taking yourself into a very deep state of relaxation where you're suggestible. Your subconscious is, mm-hmm. can be suggested or programs swapped out yeah people don't realize when you're watching a movie you're being hypnotized absolutely when you're watching all these things are you know we just don't we we just think it's normal right like the things we listen the things we Mm -hmm. hear and Mm -hmm. social media advertising it's all painting a picture of something all the subliminal stuff of course too but edgar casey was was one of my i'd say he's just such an inspiration to me he was a devout christian Mm -hmm. but Leading into his work, he started finding reincarnation and mm-hmm. who he, he was a lot of famous people in his past life as well. But he bridged the gap of Christianity growing up as a Christian. Mm-hmm. I was, it was, you know, it was something I've heard about, I knew about, and, it, and I know a third of the world or more believes in reincarnation, the Buddhists, the Hindus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I was open to it. I think it's good to be open to it and then mm-hmm. make your own mind up. But if you study Edgar Casey, also has a number of books, and he was healing. He was doing miracles. Wow. He was, and the churches won't acknowledge him, which mm-hmm. is really upsetting to me. And really, you know, I'll go on and on about that. But he <laughs> should, he should, he's like a saint, and he was a miracle worker and did amazing things. And there's actually institutions devoted to him around the world. There's oh, wow. one in Virginia, the ARE. Mm-hmm. Can't think what that stands for, but it's dedicated to Edgar Casey and wow. his prophecies. Mm-hmm. And he has prophecies about what's going on right now. That is really interesting <laughs> that you guys will probably want to look up. <laughs> <laughs> and he talks about Atlantis, which is interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, mm. that is very interesting. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to segue a little bit yeah. into a little bit with skincare, asking you just a couple questions. Okay. Okay. What is your skincare routine right now? Okay. Well, right now, I'd say I try to use organic and, you know, pure products as mm-hmm. much as possible, just like with all of my products I use. I use a rose water toner that has coconut and I believe something else in it, but that's one of my favorite, favorite things actually. <laughs> and it's just the Thayer's in a glass bottle, rose water, coconut, like mint. I'll spray it a couple times a day, two or three times a day. If I'm just in the bathroom, I'm like, oh, I want some more. So refreshing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the smell. scent, right? And the rose. Yes, I love rose. And I'm also using like a turmeric saffron oil. Okay. I believe there's another ingredient yeah. in that. I think rose is in that as well. So part of my self-love ritual is I'll, I'll massage that in my face and, mm-hmm. and, you know, just give some positive affirmations. And, you know, I'll try to exfoliate here and there. I'm bad about that. I need to exfoliate more, but yeah. And then I try to wear natural makeup Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's funny in my younger years or or just high school and twenties, I would not be seen without makeup. Wow. Yeah. I I would not go out without makeup. I would look down if someone would see, I would be looking down. Mm. I would be so like, I did not feel good enough. And I didn't have, I didn't even have dark spots then. And and I still was so hard on myself that it's unbelievable. And now, you know, I have these dark spots that are yeah, I'm not perfect. I, I got some skin <laughs> issues and I'll go out and I'll yeah. look you in the eye and I can talk to you now and feel really good that I've, you know, yeah. evolved from there, that I'm not going to run and cower away. If, <laughs> that's why some, I see someone I know and I need to have makeup on. Oh, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's so many of us was. And I think for me, I think I went through a period of time, something similar. And then once you kind of come back to that place of love you love your skin no matter what Mm -hmm. and not needing yeah makeup or different things to cover up and getting on just a good lifestyle change and routine I think it's so important (laughs) my goal is to have skin to where I don't need makeup so hopefully I need to get a laser treatment actually that's what I need about BBL and Halo (laughs) I need to book with you or I need microderm and laser we'll see what you say I I need a few things right now but (laughs) a few things I think you know pigmentation and just brown spots is something that's probably one of the most pigmentation is the most common thing we treat Mm. like whether it's from sun or Mm -hmm. from scarring or Mm. melasma different things like that so yeah definitely a lot of options okay (laughs) yes i'm I'm looking forward to to doing all of that but and i didn't wear sunblock so that's the other thing i kind of like kick myself for but it's hard to find 
natural sunblock that doesn't mm-hmm. have the toxic stuff in it. So that was yes. also an issue why I wouldn't wear it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So I always say zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. Mm-hmm. Choose those two. Those are the physical blockers. Okay. Anything else are your chemical sunscreens. Mm-hmm. And so I say avoid those. Mm-hmm. And if they have any other name in it other than zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, don't use it. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> it's yeah. really easy and simple because <laughs> there's all these na- names you look for and read mm-hmm. and if it has anything else in there, yeah, don't use it because yes. those are chemical sunscreens. And yes. often they'll mix the physical and the chemical blockers in together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's, and I think sunscreens, yeah, very important in so many ways. But I also think, you know, it's moderation because mm-hmm. the sun is very healing and rejuvenating. Yes. Yes. And, and you're still going to tan through sunscreen. Yes. So. Well, and it depends how long I'm going to be in the sun. I will say, oh, I don't need it, you know, because I do want to get that vitamin D mm-hmm. and I do want to get just like direct with no makeup on and yeah, all that. I say 10, 15 minutes, yeah. natural sunlight, not not at peak hours. And that's mm-hmm. really helpful for, yeah, stimulating yes. vitamin D. And, and that was the other thing, tanning beds that I've used my skin with for years, over tanning. <laughs> and um, then I started spray tanning, which who knows the effects of that. Yeah. Yeah. Those can't be, you know, that great for you, I'm sure either, but... So all this, we do all these artificial things <laughs> just to feel better. And, yeah. <laughs> and really, I feel better not doing half of those anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's I a lot think of maintenance. Too. Yeah, it is maintenance. But, and I think it's all judicial use, you know, it, it's all about what feels right to you mm-hmm. and, and you can't do one at the expense of another. Yes. It's together. And honestly, just following, yeah, what's true mm-hmm. and in congruency with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there's better self tanners now. I think there are more organic ones out now. And maybe there's one you could recommend that are good. There's a couple. I'll link it up and I can't have, I don't have the name right off the top of my head, so I'll okay. link it up. But yeah, there's, I mean, I think self tanning is definitely better than going to the tanning mm-hmm. bed. And if you're going to tan better to be outside than mm-hmm. in an actual mm-hmm. artificial booth, that's yeah. just giving you the wavelengths for cancer and, mm-hmm. and sun damage. And so I think that's part of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of this is karma. From, from the tanning bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to go through a couple questions that I call my five minute glow ups. Okay. So you have five minutes. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> you have five minutes. What do you do for your snack? For my snack, usually um, a raw nut or fruit. Okay. Like almonds, I like cashews, or sometimes they're cooked nuts. Mm-hmm. And if I'm bad, it'd probably be like a plantain chip. Because it's okay. fried, but it's not that bad. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> on the week, and I'd say on the weekend, I do cheat a little bit, like... More. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat, you know, fries on the weekend or something. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in moderation. Yeah. Everything in moderation. Okay, perfect. Love it. So, all right. Next one is you have five minutes. Mm-hmm. What do you do to get your heart rate up? Hmm. Maybe jumping jacks. I don't know. Running in place or dancing. I like to dance. That's one of my other ways okay. that I meditate is really just yeah. turning on music and instrumentals and meditation music and letting the flow go. Yeah. So any... Dance would probably. I was going to say dance. <laughs> I was say dance because that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Intuitive and flowy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love it. All right. So number three, you have five minutes. What do you do to relax? Only in five minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Five minutes. You're well, transitioning then, through the day. Mm-hmm, you have just, another meeting or something going yeah, on. That'll be meditation then. That's easy. So just, you know, a five minute meditation a little or just a little breath work you don't always have to listen to someone you know telling you like I don't I guess Mm -hmm. but others might just whatever works for you but yeah I do a little five minute meditation perfect I love it I love it all right and then so we talked about your favorite skincare Mm -hmm. product that you're using Mm -hmm. talked about procedures you wanted that you would be interested in so final two questions for you okay is you are, it's your last final days on earth. You've had a really long, beautiful, full, successful, and just abundant life. Mm-hmm. Um, you have one gift that you get to leave for people to find. Mm. The gifts can be anything. Okay. What would you leave? Oh, okay. So I wanted to say crystal. A crystal came into mind right away. Like my crystal collection. Mm-hmm. I would say I, I do... I love crystals. I, I work with them mm-hmm. and I think they, I almost brought you a crystal today and I forgot it. <laughs> like, oh shoot, I was going to give her one, but they are a great gift to give to the world and they are healing. They're magical. They're mm-hmm. beautiful and they can really just raise your vibration mm-hmm. in so many ways. And they don't, they last forever. Yeah. They pretty much last yeah. forever. So you can hand them down and hand them down and keep hands. What's your favorite crystal? Different ones for different occasions, but let's okay. say your go-to 
crystal that you like to well, use? My top three are amethyst, selenite, okay. and then quartz. And mm-hmm. then Lemurian quartz is really my favorite. So can you explain what those four are? Yes. Well, um, amethyst is, it's like pinkish purple. Mm-hmm. Usually deep purple is a really good amethyst, but that is to strengthen your intuition and connects to your third eye. Mm-hmm. And you can place it by your bed stand at night and it'll help you protect from nightmares and also can give you vivid dreams. Mm. So if, you, if you're having too many vivid dreams, you can move it away. <laughs> um, but, and I love the color purple. I really connect with purple. Mm-hmm. And then selenite is the main one I work with. I have people hold selenite wands mm-hmm. and they're actually used for massage. They're called massage wands. But I also call selenite the angel crystal. Mm-hmm. And it helps you actually meditate. It will help you relax. Mm-hmm. I'd even give it to my hair clients and have them hold yeah. it. And yeah, I remember you did that. Yes. <laughs> you didn't do mine. And it cleanses your aura. Mm-hmm. And selenite can is really magical because it can cleanse your other stones. Mm-hmm. Because our stones and crystals do need cleansed. Even your jewelry. I tell people, cleanse your diamond ring. Cleanse, you know, yeah, whatever it takes things. on energy. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of those have a lot of negative energy, depending mm-hmm. on where the diamond came from. Mm-hmm. as you know like the blood diamonds and that and but selenite will help you it helps with past life regression it helps with meditation cleansing the aura and we have a lot of like emf and negative mm-hmm. like radiations it actually helps block those mm-hmm. so i have a little pieces of selenite all around my house like a crystal grid oh, I love that it. helps bring in positive energy mm-hmm. and helps protect love it and then what did I say? Oh, quartz. Quartz does like everything. <laughs> quartz can do like anything. Basically, it's like a master stone, and you can program them. You can program your crystals. Talk and to how your do we crystals. Do that? Talking to them. <laughs> okay. We talk to. They have a consciousness. Mm-hmm. So holding your crystal, you know, praying with it, meditating with it, and trying to, you know, open your heart and trying to communicate with it mm-hmm. and see what you feel. Yeah. It will come telepathically. But with quart- Lemurian quartz is specifically from Hawaii, mm-hmm. and oh, it's okay. connected to Lemuria. Is said to be remnants of Hawaii, or remnants of Lemuria. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it is what's believed in a lot okay, of the spiritual okay, gotcha. community. If your Lemuria was a highly advanced spiritual time that was mm-hmm. before Atlantis, even yeah. Or some people say it was the same, and they're just different names. So I'm mm. either or. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in Atlantis, I was told, though, in a past <laughs> life. And I worked with crystals in that life. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I think there's a lot of misconceptions that in Christianity, like it's witchcraft, mm-hmm. if you have a crystal or, you know, more woo-woo stuff. But crystals, if, if you can't use a crystal because it's witchcraft, you can't use your phone. Yeah. Can't watch TV. Can't use your computer. And why is that? Why is that? Because crystals are powering them. Mm. There's crystal. It's LCD crystal TVs. Yeah, crystals. which people don't realize. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like you're against technology then. And yeah. really, a crystal can is just a tool. Yeah, it's just another tool that you can use. Yeah. It's like if you want to hold your rosary, if you want to hold your cross. It's the intention yeah. that you have with those. Absolutely, and and a lot of it too, like with crystals, is they're coming from different parts of the earth. And whether it's, you know, people know, people know different stones like granite Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, things like that. So I think with, you know, I love crystals and I think, I think they're a beautiful tool that can be used, but it all comes down to the intention. You can't think, oh, I have my crystals, so I'm invincible Mm -hmm. and have negative thoughts, blah, blah, blah. No, it's Mm -hmm. using it with your intention of love or whatever you want the exactly. energy you want to emit out exactly and rose quartz is another one of my favorite that's what i was going to bring you is rose quartz and that's like a self-love and love crystal so that's a really good one but the, the three that i said are good starter crystals i feel like but i always tell people just whatever you're drawn to yeah and always hold your crystal and see how it feels yeah. to you but whatever crystals that you're drawn to, get those because those okay. are what you need. And your soul's telling you you need those. That's <laughs> this will help you. <laughs> but I mean, most girls would want diamonds. And I'm like, I want a giant amethyst, yeah, you know, right? tower. That it's not cheap. But I'm like, I'd rather. That's like my, you know, my dream to be just have more and more crystals yeah. or my own crystal, you know, cave. <laughs> which you I know, just I was, surrounded. This was years ago. I was at a Hyatt in, I want to say Huntington Beach or somewhere close there. But you walk in, mm-hmm. and instead of a giant picture frame, they have this three, four foot mm-hmm. crystal, Ooh. and they have them aligned with beautiful lighting. Okay. And I'm just like, like just the energy of yeah. it was just oh, incredible. And so I was like, yeah, this is another way to start, right? Sw- yes. Swapping out different things. Oh, and yeah. Mm-hmm. coming back to nature and energy. <laughs> and, and I want to say sage too is another one where I feel like people think 
oh, that's witchcraft if you use sage. I'm like, it's incense. <laughs> you know? Like, do you, you've never used incense? You never used air yeah. freshener? Yeah. No, it's, it's evil and it's satanic and it's witchcraft. <laughs> It's, like that's, it's just another tool. And actually, sage is naturally antibacterial. Yeah. I'll burn sage, you know, at least twice a week yeah. usually and sage myself more. Yeah, it's just I, an herb. Yeah, but, and it's, it's beneficial. Yeah. It's better than, they, they spray toxic air fresheners yeah. that are full of so many chemicals. Yeah. When you can light sage and it's actually killing bacteria in the air. Love it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a great tool to use and benefit for you and your family. And it cleanses the energy. Yeah, which, which is... is yeah. Really important. <laughs> Which is and your life soul is not going to be that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> get a headache from that stuff. I'm so sensitive to that. If I yeah. get people, I'm like, oh god, they use up. I can't. I, to leave. I can't be here. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I love it. So, all right. So, final question is, what does unleash your glow mean to you? Mm-hmm. Awaken your true self. Mm-hmm. I would say so. When we, a big part of what I want to teach people is awakening your true self. Mm -hmm. And that's when you don't let all these, you know, beauty standards or society standards or your old programs from childhood, you overcome all these things, break away, become truly who you were meant to be before all of these negative things were put in your mind. Oh, absolutely. Before, yes. So awakening your true self is is so important and, and yeah. key to spiritual path that we find out who we really are and we live our true self. Absolutely. And we speak our truth and yes, you will glow. I was so <laughs> <laughs> Awaken your true self. And I think such a beautiful lesson because yes, you can go through where it's not using beauty products or different things. And it's funny that for me, it's the opposite where Mm -hmm. it's coming into using these as an expression of Mm self-love and finding that balance and awakening your true self. So I love it. Definitely. (laughs) And and you, I can tell you, you embody self-love so much and confidence (laughs) and are a great example of all these things. Thank you. (laughs) That's very sweet. I appreciate it. So, all right, guys. So this was an amazing episode. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. And (laughs) yes. And so if you want to connect with Denali, it's Denali Mind Body Soul. Yes. Dot com, or you can find her on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube, and we'll have those links. Yes, up. I'm pretty lame on Instagram. I don't get on there much. That's but, right. <laughs> so go to my Facebook, but yeah, usually. So, well, thank you. Yes, it's my thank pleasure. You. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of The Glow Collective, I humbly invite you to take a conscious moment to keep this vision glowing. I would love for you to subscribe, rate, and leave us an honest review. And if this podcast resonates with you, share it with three or four of your family friends. Tag me on Instagram at D-R-V-S-K-I-N and let me know which words and messages really hit home for you. Let's get the message growing. And why? Because I really want you to glow. Our time is now. And this podcast is only made possible because of you, because I am called to give back to you and share these ideas, thoughts, and messages with all of you, my intrigued glow getting listeners. We are high vibrational beings here to grow and feel. We are meant to create and perceive deeper experiences of connection and to ultimately enhance the level of love and joy in our relationships of our life. So this is a wrap to today's episode. I'm your host, Dr. V. Stay tuned for the upcoming episode of The Glow Collective, and let's live, love, and glow.